Thank you for joining us. You're listening to the Write Project podcast and radio program. This is a show about writing and modern Newfoundland author culture. This program is produced and recorded at CHMR FM 93.5 FM in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador and is aired on other great stations in the province and elsewhere in the country. It can also be heard online at www.chmr.ca. I'm your host, Matthew LeDrew, author of the Xander Drew series and founder at Engine Books. Let's see what we have today. We are on with Jen Windsor, the executive director of the Writers Alliance of Newfoundland and Labrador. She has been gracious enough to come on the line with us here at the Write Project podcast. She's been very, very busy with a thousand things that she's been doing during, working from home during the uh, this crisis. And we're going to be talking to her about some of the things going on at Wannell, uh, the things she's been up to, things they're planning, uh, that, you know, things to help writers while we're all in self-isolation and keep things, keep things running. How are you, Jen? Uh, great, Matthew. Thanks for having me. No problem. And may I say, thank you for everything you do. You are, this is probably the best board I've ever seen at Wannell. It's really great. Thank you so much for saying that. And, uh, I have to agree. I, uh, I've worked in the arts for a lot of years and I've worked with a lot of really great people on boards and I love my board so much right now. So supportive, such, uh, you know, great ideas and dynamics and energy. And uh, I'm really thankful to have them. And they've also been, you know, very understanding of, uh, of the situation. And uh, I'm very lucky to have them. Yeah, like a board in my mind, like when I think of an arts board or any board, a board of a business, I tend to think of it like a reality show where everyone's squabbling, but I wish that it was more like the crew of the Starship Enterprise from Next Generation, where everyone's just working together for the common good and everyone's on the same page. And it never yeah. is that, but it seems like yours is a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, like we don't always agree on everything, but I think there's a great dynamic within our board that there is a really high level of mutual respect. For sure. And, and you know, some people may come at things from a different angle than others, but everyone is very respectful of everyone's opinion. And at the end of the day, whenever we make decisions, we make decisions for what's best for our members as a whole. And uh, I think so far, um, it's been really working for us and really appreciate all their time. And, you know, those board members, too, they're volunteers. These people are not getting paid for their time. They are volunteering. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, some of these people are putting in a lot of hours. Yeah. Um, so we, we appreciate that so much. Volunteers, um, you know, they make associations like ours possible. And um, I'll take this opportunity to even give you a little shout out if I could you had you were named our volunteer of the year uh last year at our annual general meeting congratulations that might be the only thing your board has done that I've disagreed with yet but yes <laughs> but no I mean you you have been so helpful to us too and you've been sitting on committees and and been involved and engaged and uh we oh, i've be been meaning to, to say to ask you actually mm -hmm. i uh would like to be on all the committees oh yeah yeah i'm sure we can arrange that excellent actually no 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 we're not going to do that to you no we're not going to do that to you but we do appreciate everything that all the volunteers do and like i said uh we did acknowledge you as a volunteer at our last agm and we want to continue to do that uh in the future for all of our volunteers uh they're very important to us. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's yeah. it's it's a mutually beneficial arrangement. You know what I mean? L like, yes. if if you're a part of Wannell, it's a volunteer run for the most part organization or a volunteer led organization, and they help writers. If you're a writer, the better they do, the better you will do. That's yes, not... yes. Rising tide floats all boats. Yes, yes. What an interesting person for you to quote. <laughs> wow yep. okay yep. well uh you're on here now uh i wanted to ask you about the things that Wannell has um in store for the next little while uh to keep people to exciting things that uh that might keep people interested especially while they're at home ways that we can do events from home all that kind of stuff 
Yeah, so um, obviously, you know, business as usual um, kind of ended uh, on, I believe, March uh, 14th or 15th. We closed our offices at that time. Um, I, we were we were a bit ahead of the jump from others, but uh, again, going back to my very proactive and very smart board, they, they wanted to shut things down early, and uh, so that's what we did. But since then... We, um, we have been working very hard in the background to develop uh, some new programming and some new opportunities and services for our members. We had two events that were in the works. Uh, for example, uh, one of them was our Poetry Month event and another one was our Manuscript Evaluation Service. And um, like many people in the arts, we were kind of stuck in this limbo that we were waiting to see if our funders were still going to fund us for these projects when you can't have a public event. Sure. Um, luckily, both of those funders came through. Um, uh, both of them uh, were attached to the Canada Council. One was the League of Canadian Poets and one was Canada Council for our uh, mentorship program. Um, so we're very thankful that those funders have come through and agreed to continue to pay those readers. So. Uh, we're working in the background to develop what that's going to look like, and we're excited to uh, get those events out there and uh, do some poetry readings and some manuscript evaluation readings. Um, we're noticing a lot of live kind of video stuff coming online, and that's really great. We want to be a part of it. We uh, So obviously, as uh, writers, we're going to have some uh, lots of different readings and stuff, but we also want to do... Uh, some more interactive things. Um, anybody who's familiar with the association probably knows of our bi-weekly write-in event. Yes. Um, yeah, so you've been there um, many times before, and uh, we, we've had a, we've been really successful in that event that um, I'm pretty sure that we've never had a write-in that had less than, like, 15 or 20 people. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we want to be able to kind of offer that same kind of thing um, but in a way that um, might be helpful to people. So we're going to do kind of ask me anything, um, live video streams where we'll take staff or board or a member, and uh, we're going to put them online for a half hour, 45 minutes, and just let everyone ask them questions, ask them anything, kind of in lieu of our uh, write-in and a way to kind of connect with the association again and ask questions and that's so interesting. By the time this yeah. airs, I will have just done something like that with uh, with Engine, but specifically to uh, to answer questions about submissions where they're closing soon. Right, right. Yeah, I uh, I find that method can be really nice. I mean, if it's like myself, for example, and it's an ask me anything, um, I really mean like people can ask me anything. It can be about Wannell, it can be about, you know, whatever um so we encourage people to um you know to, my internal troll yeah. is just is just yeah. coming up with very not cool questions to ask you right now of right course. Yeah. of course yeah yeah and i would say bring it i mean of course like you know you might get kind of trolly people to ask inappropriate weird questions but that's fine i uh I, I don't mind that. I can handle that. Not that you're a troll, but no. Oh, I know I am. That's my defining <laughs> characteristic. <laughs> that's that's the first thing I think of when I think Matthew Ledrew. I'm I. Listen, yeah. there's a friend, another author that used to live with me, uh, Alicia Morrissey's partner. Actually, ask yeah, ask Daniel. her if I'm a troll. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 So besides that. Um, we're, we're really working hard to do what I can only say right now at this point is developing as many opportunities as possible to put money directly back in the pockets of our members. Yeah. Um, so we're working on, and, and again, you know, a lot of these things are in development stages right now, and I'm not sure if they will be announced by the time that this has aired. But, um, for example, uh, workshops, maybe it's youth, maybe it's emerging, maybe it's masterclass workshops, but looking at doing some workshops uh, that we can pay our members to do online, looking at doing um, maybe uh, manuscript evaluations at a, a very reduced rate to try and get um, people to submit their work, but then get the uh, evaluator paid. So it's very important for us right now to just put money back in the pockets 
of our members and uh, just try and um, help out the members in any way we possibly can. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's very important. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yep. There was one um, big thing that we are going to be uh, announcing within the coming week, um, which I assume will be announced before that this is aired. But um, this is something that came up at our annual general meeting this past year. So I have been um, working on developing uh, an insurance package for our members. Which is incredible. Um, Like, that's something that I was like, that would be awesome when I heard it at the AGM. But there's no way that can happen. Yeah, so it's uh, it's going to happen. So we are working with a program that is insurance for arts and entertainment and for uh, Writers Coalition programs. So these programs are the industry standard for self-employed professionals within the cultural sector. Um, I believe that they should be, you know, a benefit to the members. Obviously, if you're a member of the Writers Alliance. Um, we would connect you directly then with the insurer and um, they would be able to sign you up. There's going to be uh, two different packages, I believe. Um, They were going to be accessible to individual members um, and there'll be um, no liability to our organization and no financial commitment. And there's not a lot of kind of background work for us as an office, which is incredible considering we are uh, unbelievably busy right now but it's uh, being able to offer these insurance packages to our members which we are very excited about we um we're happy to offer it we hope it can be helpful there was uh i was wondering if maybe the members would feel oh well i can't really afford to even pay for insurance right now but maybe for those members that can and just the fact of knowing that it's there um for them when they would like to uh, like to access it. Um, so we're very happy to be able to announce that within the coming week or so. Yeah, no, that is incredible. That's that's wonderful, wonderful news. Because for uh, it, it's sad for people who still won't be able to afford it, but for people who who can afford it, the the the, the small monthly cost, and uh, but. Say, say like me, who only recently in the last five years became a full-time author and at which point wasn't getting insurance through my uh, employer anymore, that became an issue where it's like, well, how do I do this? And it's it's it can be expensive when you approach a place on your own and it's better when you go on, on behalf of a group, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, and, you know, under this program, too, just the way that it's built, it's actually a fairly affordable insurance plan um, as far as insurances go. I know I have my own insurance plan um, that I pay for apart from this, but uh, in in looking at this, I'm probably most likely going to switch over because it's actually fairly affordable. Awesome. Um, Yeah, and it's it's guaranteed acceptance. It's coverage for individuals, couples, and families. um, Health benefits for life. um, No waiting periods. No deductibles. So it's very, um, it's a very accessible program. Like I said, it's um, you know offered by a not for profit insurer. Oh. Um, Yes. Yeah. So it's like an arts and entertainment plan, and it's available nationwide and easy to join. So. As an organization, if they join this particular insurer, they they kind of look at it like if if we get a ton of people adding up, then the cost benefit kind of works for them. So that's why the rates are so incredibly low and that they can offer them to organizations like ours. And we are uh, going to be very happy to finally be able to announce it. Yeah, absolutely. That's wonderful. It, in in general, that is a great thing that you are are offering. Thank you. So, um, what what else is on the go that you want to? That's amazing news, and that's going to be something that's very welcome, I think, to uh, to a lot of people in the community. What else do you have on the go uh, lately for Wannell? Not that you need anything else, because that is balls, but um yeah as i said it's been very busy we we have found our kind of uptake in emails and just general correspondence from all of our social media channels is you know 
you know, tripled. Um, so we were, were, you know, just a notice to anybody who is trying to get in touch with us that uh, we're, we're going to get to all your messages as soon as we can. We really try not to let a message go much longer than uh, 24 hours, but um, just to let everybody know there is like a little delay right now um, just because it is so busy. But we do appreciate everybody that is um, getting in touch with us uh, right now is a, you know, it's, it's very interesting times. And I think people are reaching out to organizations like ours, organizations that um, support artists and offer kind of creative outlets and opportunities. And so I think, um, you know, creative organizations like ours are, are really feeling it right now and almost like a, an additional pressure to, to, um, to offer things and come up with great ideas and innovative possibilities and to just uh, try and get out there. So we're trying very hard as an organization to deal with the challenging time, but we're also trying to look at it as an opportunity um, as much as we can to, to really get our name out there and our programs and our services and show what we can do and to give people um, a bit of an outlet at this time to be a writer. Um, we're, getting a, we're getting a lot of new members and a lot of people that are kind of coming out and uh, interested in the organization and we're very excited to have them and um, happy to see that so many people are watching us and what we're doing and we're hoping to be able to keep up the good work and, and do what we can. We have our, of course, our manuscript evaluation service, our mentorship program. We have um, lots of different things that are available to people. Uh, right now, of course, is our fresh fish contest is happening right now. We extended that deadline um, to the 30th of this month because we acknowledge that uh, it's a bit of a rough time for people, uh, and some people are having a hard time focusing to getting some of their writing done, so we just extended that deadline for for a bit for people. That's amazing. Um, of course. Yeah. Fresh yep. Fish is interesting. That's a, that's, that's a good one for, for up-and-coming authors, for sure. Engine kind of watches that one really intently every year, just, just yeah. to see who's who's coming, you know? Yeah, yeah. And with good reason, because, you know, the people who um, are these winners and runners up of, of Fresh Fish are, you know, some of these books have been, you know, huge, huge uh, successes. And uh, it's, you know, I'm not going to lie, this is a competitive contest. This is, you know, some really great work. I don't envy the job of the jurors, but uh, the reason why it is so competitive, though, is because it's just such a great prize. We are so happy to have the uh, credit union come on every uh, every second year to fund this prize. But the winning author receives a cash prize of two thousand, or sorry, five thousand two hundred dollars, and then they get a thousand dollars towards professional editing services. And then the uh, two runners up uh, also received, they actually received $1,200 um, as a runners up prize. So, um, and not only that, I think, uh, you know, saying uh, that you won the Fresh Fish Award uh, for that year is also, um, that's also a big thing. It's a pretty prestigious award and we're really happy to offer it. It is. It is. Uh, Jen Windsor, what was an early experience that you had where you learned that language had power? I guess probably pretty young. I was always a pretty kind of rambunctious type of kid. And I was always um, performing something. I always played instruments and wrote things and wrote songs and plays and just constantly entertaining. And uh, my idea of a good time when I was a kid was to be, you know, to fully produce some type of show, whether it be me playing music or acting out something or doing a lip sync. And I would charge my family to come watch. <laughs> um, and th this is all true. There's multiple embarrassing uh, VHS tapes that exist of um, this footage. But, uh, and I mean, my family always kind of got a kick out of me. I'm a little bit of like the family clown. So I think from a really young age, I, I understood that, you know, language and communication was something important and something that um, could make people smile and entertain them. And, um, you know, e e even when I got older, I 
was into theater and improv and, and whatever I could be in into school too. And uh, so, yeah, I guess uh, from really young. Just so you know, and that's wonderful. That's a great answer. That's really cool and funny, mm-hmm. and I can't picture that at all. Um, mm-hmm. One thing that would really cheer people up during self-isolation is if those VHS tapes found their way to YouTube. Oh my goodness. I will say that I did a, I think last year I posted a very quick, like 15 second clip of a lip sync that I was in when I was like 10 um, at the Avalon Mall and I won that lip sync. So, you know. You're an award winning author. Well, I'm an award winning lip syncer. Well, no, you're, you're, Uh, you're, you can put a comma between them and it still counts. You're award winning (laughs) and an author. (laughs) Uh, yeah, I mean, there's so many embarrassing uh, videos of plays and, uh, again, like shows I put off for my family. But I, I did have a, a very um, lustrous uh, karaoke, no, sorry, I, a lip syncing career for a bit there. Um, and I and I will admit that I did win most of them. Mm, I did. Well, then. Yeah. Well, then. I had no idea. That is wonderful. Jen Windsor, in your um, experience, in your opinion, what are uh, important magazines or uh, or podcasts or um, mailing lists that writers should subscribe to? Oh, that's a that's a good question um, for writers specifically. That's difficult. I want to say like all local ones. Like I want to say you should do a Newfoundland Quarterly and a Riddle Fence, and you know maybe a local podcast would be the Writers Alliance podcast. Yes. Uh, um, you know, uh, yes, I am saying all local, but uh, that's that's how I roll. I want to support all local. I feel like all of those are important, and we want to be able to support our local community and uh, all of those give an outlet for them. Excellent, excellent. Uh, I believe the Writers Alliance has both a podcast and a magazine and a mailing list. Do they not? Uh, yes. Um, our podcast is available on our website, which is vinyl.ca. Our magazine is not available to the general public yet. Um, that's good reason that's to join that Wannell. Love to do. Yeah, that's something that we'd love to do down the road. Um, it's called Word Magazine. Um, the last issue is stunning. So proud of it. Um, and the cover artwork is stunning. Anybody who isn't familiar with the artist, Kaylee Middlecoop. You know, yes. Incredible artist. Look her up on Instagram, Facebook. I'm such a huge fan of hers now. Um, but yeah, so the magazine is uh, articles about writing. Um, and it's very helpful for writers at this time. It's only available to our members. But we'd love to be able to offer to the general public down the road when um, when the magazine can afford to publish so many uh, copies. Yeah, I would love to have it everywhere, especially. Yeah. I feel like I mean I always liked Word, but now I'm just I'm so proud of it. Like I want I want it to I want it to be in every coffee shop. I want people to see how slick and colorful and well done it is you it know? is it is slick and i i'm yeah. trying not to say how cool it looks because i i did a fair bit of it but yeah yeah it is yeah it's awesome it's yeah. awesome so um we want to keep it up to that quality level and uh, then i would love to be able to have it in every coffee shop across the province that would be amazing it would yes absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. jen windsor uh, what would you choose as your animal mascot or avatar or Patronus, whatever you want to call it? Oh, my goodness. Um, that is uh, my animal. What would that be? Wow. Um, is it is it weird for me to call myself a beaver? That is not weird. Uh, is there a reason? <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty Canadian. It is. Um... I guess I just feel busy all the time. And that's like the first thing that pops in my head. Like when it comes to uh, the writing that I do for uh, the Writers Alliance, um, you know, in the midst of this whole pandemic thing, it was also final report uh, time. So it was, you know, uh, very busy writing reports and writing new applications. And uh, just, you know, I feel like I'm constantly writing things and writing pitches and uh, correspondence. So I guess I just, it feels busy. And uh, in my 
my own personal project that feels busy too it feels um you know it's i'm writing a a non-fiction piece that's a collection of stories so i'm always doing um uh, interviews with people uh from all over the world and then uh and then kind of transcribing them and then writing stories from the interviews and it uh it, it always feels i guess just busy yeah yeah busy busy sounds like it works for you yeah absolutely mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jen Windsor, so you're writing some nonfiction stories um, based on real experiences of people. What do, if what if anything do you owe in terms of like respect and stuff like that? The people on whose stories you use? Oh, like the utmost respect. I um, uh, so my my piece is. Uh, going to be uh, about women who got pregnant while working on cruise ships, um, like I did. So I spend hours, hours, hours talking to some of these women. Sometimes I will um, even go back and do second and third and fourth interviews with women. And sometimes, you know, we become friends and made like a really important connection. And we're both talking and like weeping with each other. And it's, you know, it's an incredible um, experience and they're sharing, you know, their personal stories with me. And sometimes it's very difficult for them to to tell me these things. And the fact that they would share it with me, I, I feel honored that they would, you know, not only share it with me, but be so candid with me. So the utmost respect. And um, of course, uh, once I complete everything, I'll send it to the women and make sure that they approve and make sure that they feel comfortable with everything that I talked about. Because some of the topics can be, you know, really complicated. And, you know, it's involving real people. This isn't, this isn't fiction. This isn't made up. These people are alive and well and moving throughout the world and could be hurt by some of this information being out there. So I have so much respect for the women who share the stories with me and I can't wait for everybody to read them. Excellent. That's that's wonderful. Do you have a background in uh, in anthropology because like your that approach of like checking with the person to like so they can edit out or bleep out certain details. Uh, that's something from my favorite anthropologists and ethnographies. They will um like some not like I remember one specific one in sorcery shadow and it was studying people who like sorcery is a part of their culture and there were certain parts of the ritual that the the sorcos didn't want in the book because they were like people will actually be able to do this quote spell end quote so they would like cut out like and just like literally like black bar bleep some stuff that was their way around it but they would cut out whatever the people wanted them to. Like, you have to be respectful of people's the people you're interviewing. Are you coming at it from that? It sounds like you're, in, whether intentionally or unintentionally, coming at it from that kind of vein, which is super interesting and cool. Yeah, I just, you know, it was just, again, it's like a mutual, like, respect thing. It's like... They are, some of these women are being extremely candid with me on these interviews. And, you know, once you're talking to somebody for, you know, three or four hours and and you've kind of developed a little bit of a friendship and a connection, you know, sometimes somebody might say something that maybe necessarily that they wouldn't want put in a book for everyone to read. And it's just really important, you know, for me to respect them and their wishes and for them to be proud of their story also and and for them to want to share the story uh with their friends and family and i know you know when you work on cruise ships it becomes you know your your crewmates become like family it's like we call it like our ship family and everyone's so connected and respected and i'm not just talking about one cruise line i'm talking about if you work on any ship you become a part of like a ship family and everybody holds each other up and supports each other and and because it's a very unique job and situation that you know unless you've been there it's really hard to understand yeah um what it's actually like so i just you know i want to be respectful not only to those women but to my ship family and to um everybody um around the world all the seafarers around the world um that work super hard Especially right now, it's unbelievable what's happening with all my cruise ship friends. I yeah, I I, I can't imagine it. 
feels like a great place to be right now. All right. Well, thanks for coming on again. For all of you, we'll be here again next week at 4.30 Newfoundland time or online at chmr.ca. Please tune in and we'll talk more about writing culture in Newfoundland.